Hi, y'all. Welcome back to Law School Gems with Bria. My name is Bria Riley, and I am the founder of Law School Gems. I am also a practicing attorney here in Dallas, Texas, serving as in-house counsel for a publicly traded company and their marketing and advertising legal group. Today, we are going to be talking about a very deep topic, a very personal topic to a lot of people, but it has to be discussed. And what better way to do it than on Law School Gems, you know, to be the example, but also to open up the conversation and the dialogue. So today is about wellness. Today is about mental health. And I just wanted to affirm you. I hope you are taking care of yourself. I hope you know you are worthy and you are deserving of care of time, of love, of attention. I hope you know you mean something to someone. And I hope today you pour into yourself and you feed your soul and you do something today that makes you really happy and that makes you smile and that brings you joy. So without further ado, let's jump right on in to wellness and mental health. We are born to win. So I wanted to bring this topic to you guys today because I got to thinking about Chesley Crist. For those of you who do not know, Chesley Crist was a beauty pageant and beauty queen winner. She is a, or was a phenomenal spirit, especially in the legal community. She was also an attorney. She was still licensed at the time of her passing. And she also was a news correspondent, a TV broadcaster. She was amazing. She was an excellent public speaker, a beautiful sibling and daughter and friend to many. And yet, and still, she's not with us today. And it got me to thinking that this topic is so pivotal. It's so vital. And as someone who is a young female woman of color in the legal profession, it's my duty to kind of talk to you guys about this, right? And to make sure that you're checking in and tapping in with yourself and your mental health. Because Chesley Chris, to be honest, could be any of us, right? It could be me. You know, she was a biracial, triple threat, brains, beauty, brilliance. She had good character. She had a great heart. And yet, and still, like I said before, she's not with us today. And I don't want that to ever be any of you guys. So if you or anyone you know is suffering, especially throughout law school, because I understand how stressful it can be, make sure you say something. Make sure you speak up. Make sure you check on people. I understand that it's easy to get buried into our little hole and feel like no one cares. No one's reaching out. We're not reaching out. We don't care, but make sure that you are checking in with yourself and you're having those mental health breaks. You're having those moments of rest and resetting. Make sure that you are, you know, speaking about things that are important to you, that matter to you, that are heavy on your heart or on your spirit, and that you are opening up about them. Don't keep things bottled in. Be vulnerable, be transparent, be authentic, and all of these things help to contribute to your mental health, especially during law school. Now, there are some important questions that you should be asking yourself every day to tap in and to make sure that you are okay. And I encourage you, if you have peers that are in similar predicaments as you, make sure that they are okay and that they are also asking these questions because too often let me tell you what happens you start law school and your mental health and your wellness take a back seat it's not emphasized as much and the things that are emphasized are as followed so transition right transition into a new journey into a new phase into a new chapter focusing on that competition right you're now amongst so many bright stars and scholars and you're having to compete amongst the best of the best and that can cause a little imposter syndrome or make you feel insecure and that's okay that comes with the territory and i want you to know you're not alone in that everyone has felt that at a certain point everyone has been in your shoes but it's not emphasized enough about what that can really do to our self-worth our self-confidence, our belief in ourself, and our belief to keep going, right? And to get to that other part of the journey where you get to celebrate and be proud of yourself and you exude that self-confidence. Other things that are emphasized in law school that kind of take away from your mental health and your wellness include achieving the best and the highest grades, right? Trying to find that work-life balance and what works for you because your whole world is flipped completely 180 on the other side and you're not expecting that and you don't or may not know how to deal with that, especially if you haven't faced that before. Also, you're trying to find your tribe. You're trying to find your support system and the people that are going to be there for you to help you make it through law school. 
you may be building your network, worried about finding, you know, internship opportunities and scholarship opportunities, worried about how to fund or finance law school, hoping that when you do find that career of choice, it's something that you love and something you can appreciate that's going to fill your cup. You're also trying to keep connections with family members and friends and have a social life and do all these other things while you're in law school. And that can really take a toll on your mental health. For instance, in April 2021, Bloomberg Law reported that 27% of law students reported feeling some type of mental health, depression, anxiety, or withdrawal. After two semesters of law school, 34% of law students reported feeling symptoms of depression or anxiety and those numbers just increase the longer you last throughout your legal journey. And after three years of law school, those numbers rise to about 40%, right? So almost half of your class at some point, once you're about to graduate, will have experienced some type of symptom of depression or anxiety throughout their law school career. And that's an astonishing statistic for any law student, but especially nowadays, right? And it's something that needs to be addressed. It's something that we can't keep silent about anymore. And we shouldn't have to. You don't have to suffer in silence. You don't have to suffer alone. And I don't want you to feel like you're in this process by yourself because you are not. There are people who are there for you, who care, who want to see you succeed and kick butt like me, who want to see you be at your best and reach your fullest potential. But you can't do that if you're not recharged. You can't do that if you're not honest with yourself about what you're going through and what you're experiencing and how it's affecting you. So on a daily basis, I want you to make sure that you are asking these questions in order to check in with yourself and to just get a pulse for how you're feeling that day. How are you processing information and events? How are internal or external factors either in your law school journey or beyond that affecting your overall well-being and some of which will impact your mental health? How are you showing up in the world? What are your triggers? How are you currently processing your triggers? Do you find that you are processing your mental health? your feelings and your triggers in a way that works for you? Is it serving you? Is it benefiting you? Consider events that may be affecting you while you're in law school, but have nothing to do with law school, like the pandemic or like racial or social injustice or like the war in Ukraine or political events and political climate or family issues or friend issues. I want you to consider all of those things and all of those questions and then ask yourself what resources are available or at my disposal that I can tap into to make sure that I am being true to me, that I am addressing my mental health and my wellness and my well-being. So here are a list of resources that will help you address your mental health and your well-being and your overall wellness, right? Now, as a part of your law school tuition, many law schools offer free counseling sessions, right? It's not technically free because you've paid for it as a part of your tuition, but it's available to you. But because it's considered free and you have to make appointments in advance, a lot of times you have to do so way in advance because there are other students who you are competing with those counselor's times for. And so you want to take that into account and you may be in a predicament where you can't afford to wait that long before you go see and speak with someone else. But also make sure that you tap into what resources are available through your insurance provider. A lot of law schools, at least when I was going to law school, required that as a law student, you had health insurance either through your law school or otherwise by other means outside of law school to make sure that you can handle any mental or emotional or physical issues that you you may be dealing with where they affect your health and could impact your law school journey as well. Look for spaces and organizations within your law school that make you feel safe, whether that be, like I said, an organization, whether it be a certain environment, whether it be a certain cultural group, look for spaces that allow you to express yourself about traumas you may have dealt with in the past that may be triggering for you right now, about shared experiences, whether you're someone of color, whether you're a first generation law student, whether you were super duper young in law school, or maybe you're someone who's returning to law school after many years of taking an educational gap and you're trying to get readapted back into law school. Maybe you're a veteran, maybe you're a parent or a caregiver. Whatever that looks like for you, find a safe space of people that you relate to that can relate to you so you can talk about things that are affecting you on your day to day. Look for areas where your law school has also addressed implicit biases or have set up allyship training, right? Because that's going to behoove you and empower you and embolden you when you get into those moments where you're doubting yourself or where you are questioning why you're in law school or what was this all about? 
those types of allyships and those types of strengthening and emboldening sessions can really help pivot and ground you and make sure that you have the tools and the resources you need to get throughout your law school experience. Also consider voicing your feelings to people you trust. Maybe it's your peer, maybe it's your boyfriend or your girlfriend, maybe it's your fiance, maybe it's your spouse, your pet, your parent, whoever it is, you know, try to vocalize that. And like I said, don't keep anything locked in. And if you don't have someone you trust or can confide in, try journaling about it. Try writing it down. Try verbalizing it out loud. Sometimes just saying it out loud so whatever you're feeling is not locked away and kept inside really does help especially if you can record yourself, if you can get yourself on camera or get yourself audio version so you can hear it and play it back. Look at how far you come and where you were at a certain time. You can keep track of that. And then at the very end of your law school journey, how cool would that be to go back and listen to all those different audio files or recordings? Keep something that's going to help you tap in with how you're feeling and what you're doing and what your peak was that day or what your valley was that day. It's gonna be very important when it comes to grounding for your law school experience your mental health, your emotional well-being, and your overall wellness. Other helpful tips that allow you to manage your stress, your depression if you suffer from that, or any anxiety you may be suffering with or triggering events while you are going through this legal journey, which can happen, right? Other things that can help you manage that include remaining focused on you, right? And being in competition with yourself. Don't try to compare yourself with others because as they say, comparison is the thief of joy and you don't wanna do that. So you run your race, you make law school work for you, you focus on being the best version of yourself every single day and being better than you were the day before, being better than you were the week before, the month before, the year before, the semester before. And the more you keep doing that, the more you realize I'm only in competition with myself, I can drown out all of these other distractions and people around me. And that also helps reduce anxiety. It helps counteract depression and things that can make you feel like you're behind. You're not where you should be. You're not where you wanna be, all of the above. Don't spend time either just talking about your goals. Really put them to action, commit to them. If there's something you wanna do, do it because that's going to prevent you from being anxious about something that you haven't done, that you've been trying to do, or that you know that you need to do or should do, right? Also, don't procrastinate. Don't wait to the last minute because all that does is drive up that anxiety. It drives up those feelings of failure or lack of confidence or self-worth or whatever the case may be. And you're already combating and dealing with enough in law school. So make sure you're staying ahead of the ball, you're setting attainable goals, you're committing to put actionable steps behind those goals and you're not procrastinating. Also make sure that you're not gossiping. Make sure that you are not looking for the new tea and the hottest tea on the street. You don't wanna be a part of that. You don't wanna contribute to that, especially if it's gonna affect someone else in a negative way and you don't wanna become the subject of it. So if you can, stay out of all of that fray as well. Make sure that you give yourself grace and forgiveness when you make a mistake. We're all human. You're going to make a mistake. Say it with me. I need to breathe. Just breathe. Just breathe. It's going to be okay. And I want you to really focus on that, especially when you're going throughout your legal journey and just realizing that Rome wasn't built in a day and neither will your legal career. So take everything one step at a time. And sometimes you need to make those mistakes in order to propel you for where you're going next. And you need to learn so you can figure out, okay, that's one way not to do something. Here's another way to do it. And if you feel yourself in a rut, try not to have pity for yourself. You can empathize with yourself. You can empathize with others and allow yourself to feel what you're feeling and validate yourself in that moment. But then get back up start a new day, you know, even give yourself, I used to give myself an amount of time in which I would wail over something. And then I'd be like, you know what? I've had my moment. I've allowed myself to feel what I needed to feel. I've been validated in that. Now it's time to move forward. And how am I going to change the story, change the narrative? How am I going to pivot? How am I going to be better the next day? Because remember, I'm focused and I'm only in competition with myself as you should be. And I know that I've been saying, I want you to talk and be vulnerable and let out your emotions and your feelings, and I do, but there's also a time when you should be listening as well. If you're the only one that's always ever talking and you can't hear others and you can't get other perspectives and points of view that may be very important to what you're doing, what you need to do, where you're going, where you're trying to be, then you're gonna miss out on valuable and important information. And I don't want that for you, but that could also lead to some other issues affecting your overall wellness and well-being. So make sure that 
that when you are speaking up, it's because you have something meaningful to say and something meaningful to contribute to the conversation that will add value. Another thing, if you are the smartest person in the room, or the smartest person in your study group, then it's time to get a new study group. If you are the smartest person in your circle, then it's time to get a new circle because you're not in a friend circle. You're not in a cohort circle. You're not in a peer circle. You're in a cage. If you were the smartest, the brightest, the best, the most gifted, the most talented, right? You wanna be around people that are going to challenge you, that are going to help you build and to get stronger in areas where you may be weak and to keep moment, well, momentum going. Yeah, keep the momentum going and keep capital on areas where you are crushing it. And those are the type of relationships you want to foster because that's where your inspiration is going to come from. That's where your motivation is going to come from. And that's the characteristics that you're going to need to get throughout your legal journey while not impacting negatively your wellness, your mental health, or your emotional well-being. Remember to grow where you are planted. Remember to affirm others and to clap for them and cheer for them when it's their turn because it's going to come your turn one day and you're going to want people to do it for you. And something about cheering for others' joy, it really does bring my own joy and it, it, it uplifts me. Like I said, it motivates me. It inspires me. I like being around people that I see are doing amazing things. And you should too. You know, Don't look at that as a slight toward your ambition or your goals or your achievements or where you're going. Look at that as more motivation igniting a spark, ready to make you better, ready to help you prosper. And that's really going to change or flip the narrative, right? When it comes to how you view other people and their accomplishments so that it doesn't impact or negatively impact your confidence, your self-worth, your desires, and your own motivations. Be sure to live in the moment and embrace the present. It's easy to live in the future or what will be or what hasn't happened and worry about all the what ifs but that's going to increase your anxiety, right? And you don't want that. It's easy to live in the past and to throw pity parties or to think about what you did wrong or what you wish you could have did or should have did or what it should have could or whatever. You know, you can't change the past. You don't know what's gonna happen in the future. You can't predict that. All you can do is focus and live in this moment and be present with that. Life is a gift and every day is not promised. So live each day out loud, bold and beautiful, like I know you can like you may not get another day and that's really going to shift the narrative again around your mental health and your emotional well-being and your wellness also remember to confide in those that have proven and that have gained or earned your trust right you'll know when you're confiding in someone that you shouldn't be when it doesn't feel safe when you get certain feedback or certain lashback or whatever the case may be and you don't want that you want to make sure that when you are confiding when you are being vulnerable, that you're doing so in safe spaces with safe people who are going to help contribute to your overall well-being and who care about you and your best interests. And they're working for your good. They're not working against you. They're not plotting. They're not one of your naysayers or your doubters. They're not a snake in the grass. You don't want those type of people around you. And you definitely don't want to confide in them because that's not going to help you. So make sure that you have a good group of people around you as well. Do not accept advice from everyone. It's kind of like drinking from every cup that's offered or presented to you. Not everyone has your best intent or your best interest at heart. So make sure that you are taking advice from trusted sources only and from allies. Also make sure that you are not allowing fear to dictate your choices. Do it scared. Do it as you're trembling. Do it as you're shaking. Hell, I'm doing this right now. And I was like, whoa, you know, I never thought that I would actually see this come to fruition with law school gyms, but it's here and it's scary. And sometimes it can be draining or whatever the case may be, but I do it because I love it and I love what I'm doing and I love helping you guys and talking to y'all, dropping these gems. So do it scare. Do not let fear be the dictator of your life and where you're going or your ambitions or your achievements. Be judicious with your time and your decisions. And then finally, y'all, celebrate everything, all the small wins. I want to hear about them all. Drop them in the comments. If you have a birthday you're celebrating, if a baby has just been born, if a parent just had a birthday, if you just had an anniversary, whatever the case, you just got a scholarship, you got a new car, whatever that looks like for you. I want you to celebrate it and live in those moments because we don't get those back and you don't know when you're going to have another one, but it's going to keep you going. It's going to keep you happy. It's going to bring you joy. It's what fills up your cup and it's what contributes to your overall wellness, your well-being, your emotional health, and your mental health. And that's all I want for you. So that's all that I have for you today. Those are all my tips and strategies 
strategies about wellness. I hope you took this video in the vein in which it was presented. I love you all and I want y'all to succeed and be at your best. And you can't do that if you're not focused on yourself and making sure you're good internally. So always check in with yourself. Let me know how you're feeling today. Like and share this video with someone who may find it interesting. And this video can really be applicable to not just law students or those in their first semester, but anyone. We all need these reminders. So share this video, subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching all the way to the end about this very important topic. I am so glad that you did. It really helps me grow this audience and reach larger audiences. And if there's anything else you would like to know about this particular topic, I'm going to drop some more resources at the end of this video and down below as well but feel free to let me know what those are and I will tune in. So thank you guys again for joining me and I will see y'all next time on more Law School Gym videos with Bria. Bye guys.